Hey, Greenridge family, it's uh, so good to uh, be with you again. Uh, as many of us are experiencing this whole uh, coronavirus, this uh, time of uh, social distancing and all, has, I think, worked in a lot of people's hearts and minds a spirit of discouragement. I think uh, if, as you're talking, as you're watching, reading on uh, social media and all, uh, I think a lot of people feel very discouraged with what they're seeing, what they're experiencing. And so uh, I want to just kind of talk about that quickly with you here. Uh, first of all, what is discouragement? I think when we think about discouragement, uh, we we have to kind of break that word down. It's uh, it's without courage, right? Uh, that's what discouragement is. I automatically think of the lion on the Wizard of Oz, right? You know, courage, you know? And uh, so uh, we, we want to uh, think about uh, discouragement from a biblical standpoint. What is discouragement? Well, it's it's sin because it is a failure to live by faith. All right. So as you think about discouragement, why am I discouraged? I am not living in faith. I'm not trusting the Lord as I should. Uh, I think of Romans 14, 23, which says, for whatever does not proceed from faith, it is sin. Uh, so we want to make sure that we are living our lives in such a way that we are demonstrating faith every day in, in what we do, whether that's watching the, the circumstances that's going on in our nation with the race issues or whether it's the, the coronavirus or, or whatever. We don't need to allow uh, fear to lead to discouragement and hopelessness, but we need to be people of faith. Uh, I like what Dr. Howard Dial said he said uh, discouragement is an unwillingness to view one's circumstances from the divine perspective so if we're not viewing things from the divine perspective what are we doing we're looking at it from our earthly perspective we're we're leaving god completely out of the equation uh uh j dwight pentecost even said discouragement is principally self-occupation and so it is just uh, again we're just looking at ourselves we're we're consumed with how things are going to affect us, and instead of looking outward, and uh, but more importantly, instead of looking upward and reminding ourselves that God is sovereign and in control, and we need to remind ourselves. Uh, thinking through Scripture, there are several uh, that we could look at who got discouraged. I think of Moses uh, when he got discouraged when the, the Israelites started grumbling, and uh, there in Num Numbers chapter uh, eleven. In fact, it got so bad, Moses asked God to take his life. So, you know, uh, just be careful with your grumbling. Don't, don't be one of those people who uh, let your discouragement get, get to grumbling to where uh, you, you start becoming a downer to others and, uh, and not an encouragement. Uh, also think of Elijah. Uh, remember Elijah? I mean, there he was. He had such a, a spiritual high with the prophets of Baal, 400 prophets of Baal there on Mount Carmel, and, and the fire of God came down, consumed his altar, and, uh, and then uh, right after that, after the prophets were, were, were killed, uh, after that, uh, Jezebel, oh man, Jezebel came in and she's like, man, may the same happen to me as happened to them if I don't kill you first. So, uh, so Elijah kind of got into a, a spirit and a state of discouragement over that. And maybe, maybe that's you today. Like I said, maybe it's over the coronavirus or maybe it's over the, the racism that we're seeing and trying to deal with that. Maybe it's just financial struggle. Uh, you're discouraged over the financial difficulties that, that you're in, and, and we understand that. Maybe it's just the fact that you lost your job or that you're disappointed with your job. Maybe it's uh, health problems that you have or uncertainty about the future. There's just so many things that can bring discouragement to a person's life. But, but know this, God uses discouragement uh, in the lives of His people in, in some incredible ways. And so, uh, what are what are some ways that God uses discouragement? Let me let me just kind of share with you four of them uh, real quickly. First first way He uses discouragement is to display His strength in our weakness. I mean, that, that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? <clears throat> that when we're feeling discouraged, we're feeling weak, we're feeling powerless. God wants to use that to remind us He is all powerful. And so he will use us in our weakened state. And yes, we are weak. Uh, we can't, we're not God. We can't control a lot of things. There's a lot of things out of our control, but God wants to show 
and demonstrate that his strength is made perfect in our weakness. I mean, how many times have, have you ever been running on empty and, and just the power of God just works through you, th flows through you uh, to just do amazing things? Man, I, I've experienced that a lot of times in my preaching. You know, I just felt weak as a, as a man, and but yet by faith, just continue to preach and teach. And yet there are times where it's like, wow, just experiencing the power of God in those moments when I'm feeling weak. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. Uh, a second way that he helps us in our discouragement is it, it helps us reevaluate life uh, in general, just our own personal lives. Uh, you know, we, we should lead, it should lead ourselves to ask questions like, am I focused on wrong things? I mean, is my mind preoccupied on earthly things, on other things that I shouldn't be preoccupied, or it's occupying too much of my thoughts and I'm not thinking upon Him and the things of God? Or am I using my, my time as God would, would want me to? Uh, what adjustments do I need to make in my relationships? Maybe there's some relationships. This season of discouragement can keep, get me focused on that and I can be proactive in addressing those things. Or are my attitudes being filtered through the gospel? Uh, the attitudes that I have that are leading to discouragement, am I filtering those through the gospel of Jesus Christ? And when I do that, man, it helps alleviate and, and push away that discouragement. So uh, another way that God uses discouragement is that he, it, He'll use it to drive us to His Word. I mean, how many how many of you have had, you, you could open it for your Bible right now, and you have verses highlighted, marked, uh, things written in the margin, whatever, because of seasons of discouragement that pushed you and led you to Scripture, and God used His Word to minister to your spirit. And that is one wonderful way that God uses it. And then I think another way is uh, it exposes idols in our hearts. He'll use that discouragement to show and to pinpoint for us, hey, maybe this is an, an idol in your heart and you need to deal with this. And so God uh, is constantly uh, always trying to work to uproot those spiritual weeds of, of idols uh, that's in our hearts. So how do we conquer discouragement? Well, let me just kind of list, list uh, several things for you. Uh, first, confess every known sin to God. All right, everything that you're aware of, make sure that you've confessed that to God. All right, come clean before Him. Uh, there is just uh, such a cleansing of the Spirit that happens when you just come and you just start naming specific sins. Don't just be general about it, but name specific sins. And in doing that, man, He'll, he'll point out some areas that you need to turn from. And if necessary, you might even need to confess sins to an individual, uh, to persons that maybe you've sinned against. Uh, another uh, thing is uh, renew your efforts uh, to live a God-focused life rather than a self-focused life. Uh, again, we have that tendency to just look at ourselves and be consumed with self. So uh, renew your efforts to, to live a God-centered, God-focused life, always looking up to Him. Uh, thirdly, read and meditate on Scripture that, that counters your specific uh, area of discouragement. So uh, whatever that might be, you think through, why am I discouraged? Uh, and whatever that specific area might be, like some of those I mentioned earlier, uh, look up scripture, read it, study it, meditate on it, maybe memorize some scripture uh, to help you in alleviating. Uh, also, another way to conquer discouragement is uh, seek to resolve conflicts to the best of your ability in the power of the Holy Spirit. All right, uh, don't do it in your own strength but seek to resolve the conflicts that you might have with others. Seek to be unified with your brothers and sisters in Christ or your family members, whoever it might be. Uh, try, to, try to do that. That might help with that discouragement. Uh, another thing, humble yourself and tell your close brothers and sisters in Christ that you need prayer. Uh, man, who of us does not need prayer, right? And when we humble ourselves before our brothers and sisters in Christ, asking them to join in. God does such a wonderful, just supernatural work. Uh, not only is it a blessing to you, but that's a blessing to your brothers and sisters who are praying for you. And they see the power of God at work and it makes them feel uh, like they are have a deeper part of your life as you invite them in uh, to make yourself vulnerable and to allow them in to pray. Uh, also think on eternal things. 
just set your mind on things uh, above. Uh, I know we talked about reading scripture, but another great thing to do to deal with discouragement is listen to theologically sound Christian music, okay? Uh, make sure it's theologically sound. Uh, it's not just kind of out there dealing with emotions, but it's rooting you in truth, in scripture. Uh, listen to those types of songs. I know uh, Brendan has done a wonderful job with uh, using Spotify, and he'll put their uh, songs that we sing as a congregation. Man, go to Spotify, use that resource, that app to, uh, to help minister to your heart. And then uh, uh, serve others is another thing you can do to combat discouragement. As you're being other-centered, serving them, doing for them, fix a meal for someone, who, who does something, uh, just go help somebody with uh, a need. There's widows who could always use help with things. Uh, think about serving others. And then finally, the last thing, get plenty of rest, all right? Uh, our bodies, these physical bodies, they need their rest. And when we don't get adequate rest, the proper rest that we need, then, man, we're gonna, we're gonna be irritable and then we're gonna become more susceptible to becoming discouraged about other things. So I hope that that's just a, a blessing to you today. Uh, I know several of you are probably dealing with this issue of discouragement. If you aren't now, you probably will be at one point. And I know you have in the past. So uh, I hope that these are just some principles and uh, truths that will help encourage you. So looking forward to being with you Sunday. This Sunday, we're going to be in Genesis chapter 40, and we're going to be looking at Joseph as he is there in prison. And he now has the opportunity to interpret two dreams. The dream of a cupbearer, Pharaoh's cupbearer, and his baker. They are in prison as well. And we're going to see how this plays out, how God uses that in Joseph's life, and what principles we can take from that. So looking forward to being with you uh, this Sunday, church family. Uh, until then, just know that we're praying for you and we love you. God bless.